now we're in the play for today. Um, making sure I got my slip ready to go. Um, make sure I have my sketches somewhat close by. I like to actually have my my first ocarina close by too because it um, uh, it gives me you know something to work off of. Uh, I'll be working on my canvas board. I've got a handful of tools ready to go. Uh, the only difference between what you guys will be working on and what I'm going to work on for this project is that I'm going to use some red clay. Uh, you guys are going to use your white clay. Uh, same basic idea though for for construction. Use my wire tool here just to slice off some some clay. And I don't need very much. I'm going to do my best to kind of make a nice thin walled ocarina for today. I'm going to stop at this point in the video and just um, remind you guys of a couple of, of fabrication things. First of all, this is the last time we're going to see the inside of your ocarinas. And so when the clay has sort of dried out and it's stiff enough and just about ready to join back together, make sure you go back over the inside one more time and just smooth out any, um, any rough spots, any sort of big, deep divots, anything like that. Um, one of the things I'll do too is after I've roughed up my edges with some kind of a scoring tool, either a scoring rib or maybe you've worked back over it with uh, your wood carving tool or your wood uh, wood blade, is um, uh, fix any ridge that might be on the inside there. Uh, work it all the way around. Um, that that We're not going to be able to smooth the inside of this seam. We'll only be able to work on the outside. And so I want to see if I can maybe minimize how blobby that seam gets on the inside so that the... Um, the breath that you breathe into it is unrestricted. Um, so I'm kind of checking my, my overall alignment here. I sort of like how the two halves are fitting together. Uh, one last thing I'll do is since I included my mouthpiece, I just sort of, I had left a little bit of extra clay there and uh, this mouthpiece, right, that'll be where my airway is. Um, since I can actually get access to the inside, I might just uh, do one quick thing before uh, closing it all up, is I might locate my airway. Uh, might locate where the where the window should be um, because one of the tricky things about doing this blind is that I never really know where that back wall is um, right behind where the airway should kind of come into the clay and then drop and so if I just mark that with my needle tool now I can sort of uh, stick in uh, that brand new needle tool I just made push it through and just sort of wait until I see the needle tool poking through now I now I know right where the back edge of that window should be and so as I'm building this thing, I'll, I'll keep track of where that uh, where that mark is, and um, that'll sort of be the back edge of where I put um, where I put that window. I'll join these two pieces together.
At this point, my ocarina is joined back together. Um, my mouthpiece is formed. Um, I'm about ready, in terms of dryness, to open up the window on the top and to cut the initial airway. Uh, and then after, um, after I sort of have those two areas opened up, I think I'll probably let the piece dry just a little bit uh, to stiffen up to leather hard. I like to open up the airway and the voicing while the clay is still wet enough uh, that you know it can be polished and stretched. Uh, but once I have that initial opening, um, I'm going to leave it. Now, just a quick reminder about these fipple sticks. Um, I like to have at least three different sizes, maybe four different sizes, so that I can gradually open up the clay instead of ripping a hole through. Um, the more uh, sort of smooth and polished the airway and the voicing is, uh, the better, and the clay just responds well to this kind of work, this kind of big work, uh, while it's still pretty wet. So I have a very small mark here, uh, right next to where the, um, uh, right about where the window will open up, and I'm just going to kind of carefully mark, uh, you know, about where I want the window to be centered over the, um, centered over the mouthpiece, and all these marks are merely just for the sake of um, sort of measuring and marking, and I'll erase them all when it comes down to it. So I'm going to use my smallest fipple stick here and just pierce down into the clay to begin opening that window. So I'm just going to stop here for a second and do a little bit more um, formal sort of description of what, how I'm actually cutting that wedge. Uh, what I like to do as I'm building up that airway is fit one of my fipple sticks into the airway and fit it in far enough so that I can actually see it in the window uh, so that when I put in my other stick down from the, um, down from the top, and I start to compress and cut that edge, the two sticks sort of come together at about the angle I'm looking for. So I'll use one stick to maybe cut some more of that angle. And I'll just kind of keep cutting away clay, and maybe I'll use a fipple stick, or maybe I'll use um, a bit of, uh, bit of a sharp edge metal tool 
to refine that angle, but um, sometimes instead of uh, removing all that clay, I'll just compress the clay. I'll sort of flatten it down and, and, uh, and like a paintbrush-like motion, push it down right into the other fipple stick that's down inside. Uh, and that way I start to build that um, nice sharp edge. It's not refined yet. I have a lot of cleaning to do in here, uh, but that's a good way to sort of get that edge constructed. Now, if I have that tool coming in, that probably puts the blade just a little bit too high. Um, so I'll end up kind of having to probably uh, push that blade down a little bit, but I'll just check the sound on the ocarina just to see how close I am. Very, very light sounding note. Um, that's probably just because I have a, quite a bit of um, kind of clay jammed up in the opening yet. And uh, the other thing that um, I sort of like to uh, like to work with is if I have any kind of a light or something that I can uh, either um, you know can consistently sort of use to look down in there. Um, oftentimes I'll actually use like a camping headlamp and wear it while I'm shining it down inside, or bring a lamp over to kind of consistently look down into the dark space. Uh, this way I have the ability to sort of inspect my airway and opening much easier, see down to see if I've got any chunks of clay in there or anything. So at this point, um, I've reached a potential stopping point, right? Like my ocarina sings, um, it's got a, a nice clean airway. I've got it nicely designed. I you know, added those same four little kind of creature legs. So it's similar to my first one, but I, I wanna kind of approach um, the same kind of situation as I did with um, this uh, smaller ocarina. And then I wanna tune uh, some of these extra holes with one, um, with one extra opening, I get a single note. Uh, if I uh, can successfully kind of cut uh, some other holes in here, not let my sound completely blow away, and if I carefully tune those holes, uh, I can actually play multiple notes. Um, 
So uh, each individual uh, one of these holes, right, is carefully sized um, using the reamer that we put together in a previous project. Um, and I also use a tuner. I just downloaded a free tuner app on my phone in order to kind of find what the base tune was of the ocarina and then sort of carefully tune each successive fingering in order to um, to hit the, the actual full step or half step notes. Uh, now, if you know, you're already a musician, you know how to tune an instrument, you could probably do it by ear. Uh, I'm not quite that good, so I just rely on the tuner itself. Keeping in mind that uh, when we fire these things, um, they, all of the, you know, the openings, the entire clay body is going to shrink a little bit, so it may not be exactly to the tune that we set it at, but since they all shrink together, it'll be in tune to itself. So how would I go about uh, actually adding the tuning holes on this? Uh, I usually start those uh, with a set of uh, twist bits, drill bits. Um, they don't even have to be very sharp. Clay uh, will sort of fall away, but I've got to make sure that the clay is set, um, is dried to uh, kind of like a stiff leather hard stage. Uh, that way the drill bits uh, work really nicely, otherwise they just gum up. Uh, it's also not a bad idea to have like a blow dryer or a heat gun around to um, dry the uh, the blade because right now my ocarina sings but if I just continually blow 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 in here I'll be blowing my hot humid breath into the ocarina and I might melt that blade uh, the heat gun uh, just sort of allows me to kind of quickly dry it so that I'm not having to sit here and wait for it to air dry in between my tunings so before I just start you know drilling holes just anywhere in the sides of my piece here in order to get um, tuned openings a couple things to pay attention to um, if uh, if you know, you're trying to blow a note and you start drilling holes into the piece and the note just blows away, it just kind of becomes breath again. Uh, there is a way to sort of spoil um, the, the whistle. Now, in order to kind of prevent that, uh, probably a good idea to follow this basic rule. Um, don't, put your, um, don't put your fingering holes, don't put your tuning holes too close to the, um, to, too close to the voicing. Um, kind of have them back and maybe off to the side. Uh, I don't like to have them, you know, too close to the, the bottom area where I might kind of spoil that initial kind of drop. Um, it seems like uh, if I kind of keep my fingerings off to the side uh, that I don't, uh, don't run into that problem too much. Also, pay really close attention to, um, you know, when you're holding the piece and going to breathe into it uh, and play the note, where do your hands, where your fingers naturally kind of fall? Uh, that's another kind of indicator for me where uh, the, the fingerings, where the initial holes go. Now, I'll share a handout with you guys uh, that sort of lays out the basic kind of four note, four tuning hole ocarina tuning. Uh, not every ocarina can handle all those different tunings. I would say it'd be a good first um, good first project, maybe have one extra tuning hole so that you could play a couple of notes on your ocarina or on your stone flute. Um, you can continue to sort of scale up the openings. Uh, they get larger and larger as you get um, more and more notes. Essentially, the more openings, uh, the higher the pitch. And so uh, by the time you hit to your third or fourth opening, the holes are fairly large. Uh, you're going to need a fairly large drill bit to kind of get in there. Uh, and then the reamer can actually help you then sort of ream out not only the outside, but if you really need to, you can open up the back or the inside of the opening so that the holes don't get too large. Uh, but kind of hold your ocarina, kind of get a, get a sense for where you want that first opening to be. I usually like to kind of keep mine somewhere back here. Uh, I think I will... Uh, make my first opening right about here. I'll mark that spot and I'll get the drill bit out for the first uh, the first opening. Before I do that, it's not a bad idea to kind of check the bass level of tune, check your kind of first note. Uh, that way you know which pitch you want to hit uh, with that first with that first hole. Unless you're really good at tuning by ear, I recommend you download one of these free tuner apps on your phone. Uh, I use Instune, but any free one would work. By the time this video clip made it onto my computer, I'd totally lost all the in-camera audio, so I won't be able to actually hear my ocarina singing and all the out of tune notes, but basically the way that I work this is I slowly step up uh, the, the diameter of the drill bit in order to get the appropriate tone. I take a bass tone recording of my ocarina, figure out about what pitch I'm running, and then I step up the diameter of the drill bit to sort of increase the large steps, and then when I'm really close, I use a reamer in order to get really refined find or small adjustments to the tuning.
So at that point, I've pretty much finished the production on this thing. Uh, I've used the reamer to sort of polish out um, each one of the fingerings. It has a slightly raised ring around each fingering to kind of make locating it with my fingers a little bit easier. It also kind of cleans up the appearance of those holes with the design. Um, and then I've made sure that just all the last little bit of polishing that needed to happen on the voicing was taken care of. Um, any last little kind of bits of clay that were still floating around the inside are shaken out and um, that's ready to dry out.